Hi everybody, uh, Ryan back with you here again. Um, a little bit of bad news. <laughs> uh, just went down to get my uh, 120 day inspection done at TSI Western Star down in North Jackson, Ohio. So I usually deal with, it's pretty close, uh, pretty easy in and out. Normally I can make an appointment and they get me in. Um, no messing around uh, down there usually. Um, I'm like, uh, I don't like going mine at the TA and Petro's. Uh, because if you know their policy, if you go in there for an inspection um, and, and they get a road call, they'll take a guy off and, and you might be there half the day trying to get something done that takes 45 minutes because they'll keep pulling guys off to go out and change tires and everything else. And, um, and for some other reasons, which I'll get into on another video on, on talking about those 120 inspections, but kind of getting to the the uh, matter at hand here. Um, so I had uh, on my longer drive shaft here from the transmission to the first axle um, that the, both the U-joints had some slop in them so I guess by Landstar standards I guess they, they're not going to pass. Uh, they wanted to charge me almost $800 to change them out there uh, so I said I, I'm not going to do it. The U-joints aren't that big of a, big of a deal uh, to change out so uh, they had the, the U-joints in stock uh, $287 I think for both U joints and I drove the truck back home. I'm only about 30 minutes from, from TSI down there so not too far away and uh, so I kind of agreed on that. I bought the U joints and change them out and then we'll take the truck back down there and have them just look, look make sure I did the work and then they'll sign off on my uh, 120 day inspection and send it in to Landstar. But I uh, just wanted to show you guys uh, real quick here what, what we're going to be doing and I'll, I don't have a camera person here today to, to kind of do this like I'd like to but uh, my wife's kind of busy. Uh, today so I'm going to have to show you guys myself so it won't be as great as quality but um, at least I'll show you the, the steps what you got to do here and like what we're looking at. So. But uh, I'll show you the uh, the bad U-joints now. So I hope you all can kind of see what you want to watch right, right down in here. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see on, on video, but basically this, uh, the cross shaft here, the center of the U-joint, the, the is actually moving in the cup. I don't know if you can actually catch it on the video there. So, but I guess both of them are, both ends are bad, so I got uh, new U-joints over here so this is basically what you get the whole set here comes with you have to replace the the bolts so you get all the new strap bolts and also the um, the new little uh, hold downs and uh, the smaller bolts for those so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. I mean, um, all they just pull the bolts out of it. Uh, you just need a, a 12 point uh, half inch or a 13 millimeter, either one, to take the bigger bolts off. Then, um, you know, we've got a slip joint up here so we can just, just collapse the shaft and pull it out. Then I'll, I'll change them out. Um, uh, I don't have a press here, but um, I have a bottle jack and something heavy to press them against. So I'll show you guys how to do that if you don't have a press. Um, but like I said, if you got a, a 12 ton bottle jack or something, that um, you can use that. Like I said, to back the frame of the truck and some blocks of wood, and uh, you can uh, make your own little press. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. And once I get it out, I'll show it to you all, and um, we'll change out the U joints, get this thing back together, and and uh, get it back down there and get it signed off because uh, I've got to pick up a load tomorrow going to Utah. So more to come on that. Okay, so now once you get these straps off, um, take that one off there, just take those four uh, bolts out with the uh, half inch or 13 millimeter 12 point heads, take those off. Um, you probably have to use a uh, breaker bar to get them broke loose or air impact half inch. Um, one of the things I like to do, I put a strap underneath uh, just any old ratchet strap or something, put it underneath hold the uh don't have to be tight but um you just don't want it to hit the ground in a violent manner but once you pull those two straps off you just want to get in behind it I should get down there. pop it 
out. May have to get the other bigger breaker bar. <laughs> bar so. okay so I had to get the big pry bar out here the one that's like five feet long and I got it popped loose so you can see I'll just slide it out there and the uh, strap there caught it so we can easily let it come down and that's why you want to use a strap because that would, that would hit the ground pretty hard and you could risk uh, dropping it on yourself. So, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other end to pull it out, and then uh, we'll change these, uh, knock out the old U joints, push, press the new ones in, and put it back together, and uh, get this thing down there. I've got till midnight tonight, so but uh, yes, it should shouldn't be a big deal. It should be done here in probably an hour, hour and a half. So we will continue. All right, guys. So I'm back here. Um, had to run to down to Napa Truck Parts down in Akron because uh, the uh, Western Start TSI up there they gave me the wrong U joints. They were too big. They were they were 250s instead of 170s. Uh, so I got this out. I already got the uh, other end the U joint out removed, and I was going to show you how to take this apart. I mean, my way, uh, the easiest way I found without destroying anything. Um, there's other ways of doing it, but um, this is the way that I use. Uh, first thing. You gotta remove these clamps and you'll get uh, new, these are, you replace these, you don't use the old ones, so the new ones that come with the kit, so just take those off and and uh, do whatever you need to do with them, I usually hold on to stuff for a little while just in case I can use it for something else, but um, so we're gonna take this clamp off, then uh, you wanna set this up on block so it's off the, to the bottom of the yoke here, it's not touching so you got space. Then uh, we're just going to take a big socket and, and drive the uh, this way to push the yoke up and it, it press that the cup will come out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. If you got a press, you can do it that way, but it's kind of awkward to hold the shaft. But this way works and for me. starting to come loose. And this is, for this size, this is a, a 2 and 3 16 socket, by the way. So you want a socket that goes over top of that cup. Then uh, what we gotta do is roll it over. Do the same thing.
I'm trying to keep it from growing off. All right. Now, I'm gonna work it back and forth. And that's it. Pretty simple. Then uh, we'll put the new ones in the same way they came out and they may uh, use the jack and press those in. Yeah. All right, so this whole thing kind of took a turn even more to the worse. Um, I had, well, usually I can use a 12 ton bottle jack and use a truck or something heavy and, and press these in, but these were being pretty stubborn. So I've been wanting to get a press for a while um, for other things, I mean, I'm always needing one. Um, so I ended up, I had, had to run down the Harbor Freight and pick up this 20 ton shop press here. You know, it was $200. Um, they went, they, at TS, at Western Star, TSI, they, uh, they gave me the wrong U-joints. Um, so now, as I told you guys at the beginning, uh, it was in about $287, almost $300 for the parts to them. Um, I ended up going down to uh, Gilcrest, uh, Napa, down here in Akron, uh, truck parts, and uh, I got uh, aftermarket U-joints uh, for like f under $40 a piece. So even, uh, I'm going to return when I take this back to get re-inspected down there either tonight or in the morning, uh, I'm going to return those, get my $287 back, and even with the parts that I bought and even buying this, I'm still under $300. So basically, they were going to charge me almost 800 to do this job. Um, I've done it for about 300, and I've got a shop press at home too, and still save 500. dollars um, So we got already got one of these done, and uh, we're going to go ahead and so this ends. This is the end that goes towards the axle. It's already done. There's these little spacers um, that you put on here to get that that depth when you're pressing it. So um, it's pretty easy and. Um, we like said this have to spend a little bit of money, I guess, to save some money, if that makes any sense. But we'll go ahead and uh, press the, start pressing this one in and um, get this thing finished and get it put back in the truck and go pick up a load tomorrow. This is straight. Yeah, it is straight. Yes, it is. Put forward a little bit. Okay. Put it these set. It's a butt. It's on top.
Just get it, get it to where the white parts up to the top of the right at the edge of the black, because we're gonna put that so yolk in. Alright, stop there. Yeah. Right, uh, hold. Can you support the end of this? Then uh, the other thing I recommend putting the grease, if, if the grease fittings aren't installed, put those in before you stick these in. But you want to push this where it's about flush, uh, that cap in, then put the, uh, the cross shaft in. So that way you have enough, because it's kind of tight. So if you have it pressed all the way up in, you're, you're probably not going to be able to get this in. Then make sure all those little needle bearings are in position and everything turns freely and it seats all the way down. So that looks good. So we're going to go ahead and press it down to the, the stop. No, no, no. No, press it in. Then before it hits the black, stop it, then I'll finish it. That's good. Take that socket off. And those are those little bearings. You want to make sure those are all in there. That they put these little keepers in there to keep them all in place. But um, they should all be. If they move around, just take your finger and make sure they're all, you know, in a circle. None of them are sticking out. Because if if one's sticking out, it won't go down on that cross shaft. And this is basically, I mean, any type of PTO shaft or um, even on a via on a car, this is this pretty well the same process for the most part, other than the hardware that might be used to, to retain them, but pressing them out and pressing them back in is basically the same process. So we, we got the opposing cap put in, everything smooth, free turning, should be a little tight, not super tight. And um, then we're just going to put these retainers on. And uh, I got there's our torque specs for these. And yeah, but we'll, once we get it in the truck, we'll torque everything. And uh, that's pretty much it. The the in the truck, those caps just slide on, and those have the clamps that go over them, so they're you don't have to press those or anything. And uh, so that's pretty simple procedure as far as that goes. Same way you took them off. But uh, that's pretty much it for this job. Like I said we're going to take this back over to the other place and get this thing thrown up in there and see how everything looks.
All right, so we're back underneath the truck, got the drive shaft positioned. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put the other cups on here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, the end towards the transmission up in there, get that laid up in there. Then um, then we'll put I got that strap again. We're gonna lift the other side up and uh, slide it into place. Then um, you know put the, uh, the retainers on or the clamps, torque everything down, and this will be a done day. You know. So first I'm going to go ahead and put these on. So those are on. And I went ahead and bought new clamps for these as well because I don't know the history. And you always want to replace these bolts. The new U-joint kits, they come with them. Or if you buy clamps, they come with them as well. So always replace the bolts. But um, you don't necessarily have to replace the clamps unless they're damaged. But in this case, I'm going to. Don't move. Mm -hmm. So you won't move. One side up. Is it in already? It's partially in. I'm gonna go ahead and put a bolt and the clamp on so I don't fall down and bust my face. You push that, we we'll lift this up, you push that board underneath there. Underneath there? Alright. Stop that getting in the mud. 
Yeah. Whoa, that ain't good. No. It slid out. We got the uh, transmission end uh, put in and I uh, tightened them down a little bit with the impact on the clamps. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, put the other end, the, the uh, axle end up in here. So, um, so I just pulled these out. Just, uh, there's these little keepers in there. You make, make sure you pull those sleeves out to, and make sure all the needle bearings are in good shape. None of them sticking out or anything. So we'll just go ahead and slide those in. Make sure they spin freely and there's no noise or any. Hard. If you got a real rough spot, then you probably got a bearing in there that's out of place. Okay, so we got those in. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this up in there. And uh, make sure your transmission is in uh, neutral when you do this. It makes it easier to move it. Because um, if it's in gear, you, you won't have full freedom of movement to line this up where it needs to be. And um, I, I don't know, I was always taught to mark these in the position that they're in when you take them apart. Um, so I don't know if that's any truth behind that, if it's necessary, but I always mark them and I put them back into the same position in, in where, however I took them out, basically. So this is gonna turn. And the strap we use when we took this apart, I usually just hook that back up for safety measure. So if it does fall, it doesn't uh, come all the way down. <laughs> Sometimes you'll have to tap the, there's little tabs at the top of these yokes on the transmission and up on the other end to where those, the, the, uh, these cups will fit into. So you might have to tap them a little bit to get them to go in, but uh, I usually try to use a soft-faced hammer so that way you don't damage anything. Once you get them started, then uh, the caps here, the clamps will pull them the rest of the way in. I 
and I'm just making these snug. I mean, we'll put a torque wrench on them. And uh, these bolts, we're gonna torque to 125 foot-pounds. And these ones here on the side, those will go to 30 foot-pounds. Okay, um, I'll get the torque wrench, we'll torque everything, then um, I'm going to go down all four U-joints, or five U-joints, <laughs> and uh, grease all of them while I'm down here. And uh, that may be a reason why these, I mean these were original U-joints I think, um, so they probably got over 600,000 miles on them. From the way that the paint looked, I don't think they've been replaced. So um, they, were, they were probably due, and um, they were a little bit dry because I've been kind of gotten a little lazy on my greasing I guess you could say so, um, it's partially my fault that we're into this most likely but um I get the torque wrench get this tightened down and then uh, we'll wrap up all right so I've got a uh, Mac tools a digital torque wrench here this does a lot of different things they're kind of pricey this one was about $500 when they came out I bought it when I worked at Ohio cat but um, we're gonna go and dial this in for 125 foot pounds on here and we're going to torque those the main bolts then I'll torque the side ones to 30 those little ones Give me that extension. And this will actually make noise. <laughs> So when you get that solid noise, you know, you're at 125. It's got lights too, where it goes from green to orange to red. But so if you're working in the dark and you can't hear, it's kind of a nice little bonus feature. I think this has a headphone jack too, where you can hook headphones up. <laughs> And I'll do the same thing on the other end and torque these at, um, at 30 pounds and um, we'll be done. With, I'll grease everything with the grease gun and I'll show you how that's done and then uh, we'll be done with this and <laughs> take it down and get it stopped by TSI in the morning, get it checked off and my 120 day inspection sent in and go pick up my load tomorrow afternoon. So uh, we got a, a good high quality uh, NLGI number two grease here. Um, I usually get the stuff that's anywhere $5 or $10 a tube. Split up the grease going here. And 
get got some old grease in here that I was putting on the plows last year. So there we got all the air out of it. Now these are brand new U-joints. They're empty, so they're gonna take quite a bit of grease. <laughs> And that's pretty much it. Um, I'll probably, after they work in, because um, when I run down to get it checked and come back home, you know, after about 50 miles, I'll probably go ahead and hit it again just to kind of top them off after everything does what it has to do. So I'm going to hit the, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hit all the U-joints on the drive line here and and now that'd be a job well done, I guess. We'll see tomorrow morning. But um, that's pretty much it. So um, I got some more to come on the Landstar 120 day inspections. I'm gonna do a video specifically on that and um, do's and don'ts, um, things like this uh, to avoid. But um, again, we appreciate the support. Um, like the videos, uh, hit the bell for the updates and subscribe. So thanks, hope that helps.